What's going on guys? I'm a regular guy with the Regular Guy Firearms channel. Thanks for watching. I hope you like my new bag drop. For those of you that are not quite in the loop or haven't watched my last video, I'm doing a reboot of a lot of my previous videos. I have lesser quality, a, a huge amount of glare, inconsistency in presentation, all that other stuff. So, with all that being said, let's get right into it. Now, in the last video, it was a post-25,000 rounds longevity uh, review, basically. Now, since I posted that previous video, I, because of YouTube and because I'm sponsorless and choose to remain so, the money that would normally feed this pistol has gone to other projects, different rifles, different handguns, and all kinds of other stuff. So, since that last video, I've put something like 1,300 rounds through this gun at the very most, maybe, something like that. So essentially, this is the same amount of wear from the last video. Now, overall, right, we're going to do the review, basically, of the gun from start to finish. So I'm going to try to keep this as brief and streamlined as possible. Now, for those of you that are new and are looking into a Glock 19 for the first time, be aware of this. When this gun ships to you, it'll come with a set of Glock sights, not a set of these. Be aware that these sights are polymer, very easy to rip off, and very, very cheap. I personally do not understand why it is that Glock continues to put these out on their guns. I've heard the excuse before where they've said, oh, well, it's an economic choice because people are going to change them out anyway. But the problem with that is, is that when dudes buy their MMPs, their 320s, yes, even their XDs, and their SIGs and their M9s, or 92 FS's or whatever, right? A lot of those guns ship with quality steel sights. And a lot of guys choose not to go away from those sights. A lot of people that I personally know end up sticking a light on their gun and calling it good. They carry it exactly like that. Because in all honesty, that's all you really need, right? So there's a problem with that, and I've always not liked that about Glock and how they ship with their sights because those of you that are making the economic claim and everything else, that would make a whole lot of sense if they didn't ship Glocks to police departments with a set of steel 3-dot night sights on them. That's like the vast majority of those guns that get shipped to those departments. So I don't really want to hear it. Just ship the gun with a quality set of steel sights, even if you use the original... Um, you know, blocky, square, rear sight. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can Google through it in about two seconds. Even if you use that same sight picture, okay? If there's sights that will last, it's something that makes me not like that less. And because this is my primary carry handgun, and because I like the gun, I'm very critical about things like that. But then again, it is a nitpicky thing from me. So, if it matters to you or not, it's going to be on you. Now... That being said, let's go ahead and move on, right? The differences between it and the Gen 3 guns, okay? You have a larger recoil spring set up that's kind of a double coil. Um, those of you that own Gen 3 Glock 26s, it's very reminiscent to that, only, only basically larger. Okay. The grip texture on the stock guns, you don't see it here because I stippled this frame a long time ago. The grip texture has improved. I personally will, will go ahead and say that the Gen 3 guns and the grip texture was pretty much awful. Almost non-existent. So on the Gen 4 guns, it, is, it exists. It's there. The only issue that I personally have with it, and this is just a personal nitpick of mine, is that... And all polymer frame guns do this, and a lot of guns that ship with, that are like aluminum or steel framed and come with grip panels do this as well. The grip texturing, whatever and wherever it is, always tends to stop right here. There'll be some grip texture from about here down on the back strap and about from here down on the front strap. And the problem is, is that it just doesn't touch the rest of where your hands are. Now... Do these guns recoil particularly hard? No, not really. But then again, if you're if it's raining, if you're muddy, sweaty, even bloody, you know, and we're talking about the LEOs and mill dudes that 
would end up using this, the grip texture that's on a standard Glock 19 is not going to cut it. And it never has for those particular types of situations. And while they are rather special, we don't plan for best case scenario, we plan for the worst. Now, that being said, if that's an issue for you, I would highly recommend just stippling the gun. I have a video on that, and it doesn't take too terribly much of your time, especially if you know you're careful or if you practice it a little bit. So there it is. Now the gun also ships with three magazines, which is an improvement from the Gen 3 also, because those came with two. And the Gen 4 magazines, sorry, I had to grab one, are slightly different, okay? I don't have a Gen 4 magazine in here, actually. I'm, I'm testing a different type of magazine from ETS. I'm not going to give it the seal of approval because more time needs to pass, and in all honesty, a lot of guys that make alternate magazines for Glock suck, so I'm giving that time before I say anything positive or negative on it. But the Gen 4 Glock magazines actually have cutouts for both sides, and the reason for that is that this larger than the Gen 3 magazine release is also reversible. It's a pain in the butt to do. Frankly, I'm just going to say what it is. It's a pain in the ass to do. Okay. Um, but once you get it switched over, it's switched over, and that'll be that. You know, it, it's very hardy. It's very tough to undo, but at least it's very solid, and you don't have to worry about your magazine release falling out on you. Slide stop is exactly what it was from the get-go from Glock, and that was a slide stop, not a release. There are aftermarket options if you want to turn it into a slide release, but it's very low profile out the way. Okay, I personally prefer on a Glock to just run the slide, but then again, if you don't, then the aftermarket selection is there for you. Okay, and as far as that... Uh, or the differences between a Gen 3 and 4, that's pretty much it. The only thing that I actually really consider a true benefit from the Gen 3 to 4 guns is that the Gen 3 um, finish on the slide and the barrel are not as good as the Gen 4. You guys can tell that this has been carried for a while. Stuff is getting ripped off of it. And when I tear this down, you can see that it ages very, very gracefully. And to be quite honest, if there is an advantage and if there's a reason to get a Gen 4 gun, that's it right there. Okay, so now I'm going to tear this gun apart and I'm going to show you guys a couple of things. Stand by for just a second. Oh, and while we're talking about this real quick, I just dropped the magazine and ran the round out of it. But as far as disassembly, again, if you're new and looking for this gun for the first time, the disassembly of this is about as simple as it gets. You will want to make sure that your handgun is unloaded in all form or fashion. And then you're going to press your trigger. There is, There are two sides to this lever here. You're going to simply pull back on the slide just a little bit, pull down on, those, on both sides of that lever, and it'll then come apart. And from there, if you can't figure out the how to get the uh, recoils uh, spring assembly and the barrel out you have issues now as far as how it's aged since 2012 to 2016 it's actually aged quite gracefully you can see where some wear is and of course there's a bunch of carbon and stuff in here but you can see where a bunch of wear is from here from barrel hood lockup and from the the case of seating on it and everything else Okay, and on the inside of the slide you can actually see where it's been worn a little bit as well. There is some carbon covering this up, but you can see that there is some wear in there from it just cycling a whole lot. Okay, so there are some pretty good and polished off areas, and the barrel itself has had some similar results. But like I've said before, I've seen Gen 3 guns with the same round count through them, and they do not, and while they do age gracefully, I'm not going to sit here and knock the Gen 3 finish as if it's bad, but they do not age anywhere near as gracefully as the Gen 4 guns. So, there that is. And also, while we got this apart, let's go ahead and talk about this recoil spring, okay? Because 
around the time that I got it, there was a little bit of a hubbub because this spring was not in all of their 9mm guns, okay? The 034 or the 043 springs, okay? Now, like I said, that issue is pretty much a non-issue now, especially they've had a bunch of time to rectify that, and all the guns that were floating around that had them are probably pretty much changed out at this point. But if you have, if you are new and you pick one up, go ahead and pull your recoil spring and look at that. It should be 043, just like that. Okay. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people, including Glock, claim that their guns shoot smoother with these new recoil springs. I gotta tell you, I, I, I've i shot quite a few Glocks, Gen 3 and 4, and more than one Glock 19, Gen 3 and 4, I have noticed no difference whatsoever. Okay, so, unless I'm just missing something, I don't notice that at all, and I don't really recognize that as a selling point to the gun in itself. But... Again, if you do feel it magically, and I don't think you do, then yay, but I don't believe that to be a real thing. So I'm going to put this gun back together and we're going to go over a couple more things. Okay, so now that we're back together, let's go ahead and talk about this trigger. For some reason, there are only three different types of people when they talk about Glock triggers, okay? There's the Ultra Glock fanboys that are like, the trigger's perfect. There are the dudes that hate Glocks that are like, this trigger's friggin' lousy. And then the dudes in the third camp that are just kind of like, it's a trigger, it, I don't care. Practice with it, and you'll be fine. I'm in the third camp. Okay. This is a striker-fired trigger, which means, unlike hammer-fired triggers that are in single action and stuff like that, or double action triggers, where as you pull the trigger, it cocks and then releases the hammer, what happens is that in this state... It is about the safest it can possibly be. When the slide is charged, it about half cocks the, uh, the striker. As you press the trigger, it cocks the striker the rest of the way, and then it releases once you reach a certain point. Now, as far as how the trigger feels, in all honesty, if you come off of a hammer gun like a 1911, 92FS, a 226, something of that variety, it's going to feel fairly squishy for you. It's going to feel very not clean because it ain't. It really isn't. But the, the trick in all honesty to work this out is that you have some slack in the beginning and if you really pay attention to it when you're pulling on that slack, you can actually feel it starting to mess with the striker. But if you take out this slack, there's a solid wall and that's where your weight is. And pretty much from that point, you're just pressing a quarter of the way through. Now, there, it's about a five and a half pound trigger with a quarter inch break and a quarter inch reset. So, not the greatest thing in the world, but it ain't bad either. So, if you pick one of these up, train with it, you'll be fine. So, here's the thing. Now, these guns are about 50 to $80 more than a Gen 3. There's going to be a lot of people asking, well, is that worth it? The Gen 3 guns come with three magazines, right? So part of that extra cost is for that magazine. So when you factor out the factory magazine, okay, instead of it being $50 to $80 more, you're looking at something like $20 to $50 more, depending on where you look. Now, is it worth it? For the yes side of the house, the improved finish by itself the is, is the selling point for for the extra uh, twenty to fifty bucks, in my opinion. When you cobble together the fact that you can reverse this magazine release, and that's pretty much it, then there is a little bit more of a reason to get it. Now, if you're the guy that wants his slide cut or wants a slide sent to him with dudes that cut them and things like that, the Gen 4 is a little less appealing to guys like you simply because there are less 
uh, aftermarket options open for it, although they're catching up fairly rapidly. So, for my particular use as a carry gun and stuff like that, personally, I would have just, if I could do it again, I would have just bought a Gen 3 and called it good. Because I'm still replacing the sights that it ships with, I'm still going to stipple it, and that's it, really. That's all I need from that particular pistol. Yes, I'm a southpaw. Yes, I'm left-handed, but I can just press the magazine release with my trigger finger. I've been doing it with every handgun that I use. For a short time, I reversed this. I don't really care about that anymore, and I did the same thing to an M&P. I still don't care about it. So, again, if I was to do it all over, I would go with the Gen 3 personally. What you plan on doing with this particular handgun is really up to you. But for the most part, I would say that the upgraded finish is a big thing, especially if you plan on keeping the gun for a real long time and running a lot of rounds through it. So, let me guys know what you think. You know, I want to see what your little opinions are between the Gen 3 and 4 guns. I personally don't see the reason for a lot of the major design changes to like the recoil assembly and slide and stuff that they did when all they could have really done in all honesty is just add a steel guide rod to the old gen 3 recoil system it was already about perfect they were already stupendously reliable pistols and in super extreme tests the gen 3 design tends to do it just a little bit better but it's still a squared away pistol. It's still going to last for friggin' ever, and it's still going to do exactly what you need it to do. So, with all that being said, guys, remember, a regular guy's firearm is the last defense against tyranny. Be easy.